thank you, Julian, and thank all of you for being here today and for being partners in this great effort. It is very exciting to see you know, so much support here for such an important issue. And obviously, STEM education, you know, it, it's about the future, and it's about how we're going to continue to you know, lead the world on the economy, on competitiveness, and it, it, it all comes down to if we're going to be the leaders on STEM. So first, I want to thank you for being part of that leadership effort and being here today and for the roles that all of you, your associations and companies and everything play to support this important effort. Um, I think that is an essential part of how we are going to stay competitive in this you know, very uh, increasingly competitive economy, international economy, and it's, and it's also how we're going to provide the best jobs for the future. So I'm very excited for uh, my role here in Congress. I chair the Research and Technology Subcommittee on the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. And we are very much focused on STEM education. We did some legislation last year to make sure we're providing um, STEM education grants, all the things we need to do there. We also, um, I was able to pass this year the INSPIRE Act, which is a bill to get more women involved at NASA. So it, it's, it directs NASA to make sure that they're incorporating all of the, and targeting women in all of their efforts and to make sure that women know all the different fields available in aerospace. It's not just about maybe wanting to be an astronaut. There's a whole broader field, as you know, in the aerospace industry. And given these days when you have healthcare and technology and defense and all the sciences really crossing over so many, you know, the disciplines cross over now. You know, as we do the genome project and things that are going on there, we realize that it's not, you know, we used to have our, the diseases in all these silos. You have breast cancer, you have skin cancer, you have pancreatic cancer, but now we know a lot of these things share a lot of things in common, so a cure for one might be able to be a cure for another. So I think what, what, you're, what you're doing here is about relationships, is we need to be much more uh, collaborative and open, having much more open platforms, making sure all the information is getting out to everyone. And I'll give you an example today, and I'm actually following up and talking with this gentleman later on today, but this morning a gentleman said, well, he'd been talking with our office a lot about defense issues and a lot of interesting defense initiatives that they're working on, very much a defense company. But then a university heard about some, something they're working on and realized it would have a medical application. And that what he was able to do with his defense company could come in and shorten up some of the work they're doing on medical things you know, by years. So this cross-discipline effort that's going on out there is very exciting. That's why you see all these uh, companies and then you have these relationships. Because I think relationships are not get myself mixed up here. First and foremost, education and STEM education, making sure we have uh, that in place. Then secondly, um, we in Congress have to do our role. So I mentioned a few of the bills that, that we've worked on, but we also have the Competes Act, which is out there, which is exactly designed to make us more competitive, have more money for grants for the National Science Foundation, basic research, we know basic research across the disciplines what we need to do. And then third, what you're doing here today also, is I think those relationships. And I think the relationships, but it's a little counterintuitive from science because we, science is very, in math, very technical, we look at things and you know, you just work through the formulas. But it's also about being collaborative and about relationships and finding people who are engaged and involved and have these passions. And I want to give you an example on that that I recently ex experienced with a woman who um, actually headed up um, XM Sirius, it's our technology company, very successful there. And she actually spoke to, she was speaking, speaking on a panel that, um, that, that I was speaking to also, and she went before me. So I was sitting there listening to this fascinating story. She's heading up this company, and then her fourth child, a young your daughter, was diagnosed with a terminal illness, a terminal pulmonary illness. So as she described it, she said, I did what any mother would do, or any parent would do. I quit my job so I could find a cure for my daughter's illness. 
It's like, well, wow, not, not every, that's a bummer now because I never thought of that. And she went, and she had not taken a biology class either since college or high school. But this, she was not, she was a technical person, but she, and a management person, I think a lawyer also. But she hadn't done this. And she went to work and started getting um, research proposals from a broad range and started investing in them herself in the private sector. And of course, you all see a lot of private sector investment going on now. And then when that wasn't moving quickly enough because her daughter did have sort of a timeline and with a terminal illness, she then started reaching out to drug companies, found out about uh, one particular project that had been cut off by a drug company, but the professor was very, I mean, the researcher was very upset that this had been cut off. So she was able to go to the, the researcher whose project had been stopped, hire him, convince the drug company to sell her all the research that had been going on for $25,000 apparently. And the sh long and short of it is she now has a multi, you know, a billion dollar company, a lot of money, and, and uh, also found treatment for her daughter's disease. So how, you're just an incredible story that should be a movie and I'm not doing justice to it. But what she emphasized, and I really hadn't even thought about it, but it makes sense in, with all of what you're doing, and right, until I heard her explain it, this is so much about relationships because she just refused to take no for an answer and she kept finding people out there who understood her passion for this but also had the science and had the tools and were willing to break out of the mold of what was going on elsewhere. And I think that's so much of what we need to be teaching our kids and it's also what we need to be doing in policy to make sure we have open platforms and more transparency that people can share across disciplines, and then that you all can feel free to move around into all different areas and make sure we are getting the best uh, technology and information out there and having the best and brightest minds know that we are going to support them in these career paths in STEM. And that's why I think what you're doing today is so important because you know, I have kids come in every week. A lot of them are coming in right now because it's appropriation season. And they want to know, is this going to be a career path where I can continue to work, make money? Is there going to be, you know, but also pursue their passion? You know, if you're, you want to know all three of those things. And I tell them yes, because I really think we're on the cusp of big discoveries and really exciting things if we, if we uh, get these relationships. And, and the funding and the research and everything working out right. So it's a privilege to be able to be here and uh, meet with you and work with you. And Joanne, thank you for all the great work you do. And I am pleased to be on the board to work with you. So my invitation is open to all of you here. If there's ever anything we can help you with in my district or you know on my committee, please use us as a megaphone to get the word out in any way we can or give us ideas of what we need to be having more hearings on, or any way we can help you know, with, those, with those relationships and put, putting people together. Because, because everyone sort of comes through here. I do like being an aggregator of all these things, and that is what I, I, I see in these breakthroughs. A lot of people really um, doing some exciting things that I think in our lifetime we will be curing diseases like diabetes having vast improvements on delaying Alzheimer's and hopefully ultimately curing Alzheimer's. And if we do those two diseases alone, not that I don't want to do every kind of cancer treatment possible also, but those two diseases alone will save us hundreds of billions of dollars in tax dollars, which then in turn, we can both return to you and the taxpayers, be able to afford a lot of these things, you know, in education, but also, be able to make those investments that we want in that next generation of, of leaders. So thank you for being part of this exciting world. Have a great visit here today.